uh, Steve, and um, good afternoon, everyone. It's my real pleasure to be here this afternoon uh, to talk about uh, one of the case studies. I, 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 when I got, I got the, the email uh, yesterday, I think from Steve, and he was asking me what uh, or focus on either dairy or um, now that I'm working on South Asia, what are the sort of things that uh, you know Africa does not need to do that South Asia did wrong. But we thought that that topic was too big and we need to focus on, on the book and, and be able to actually uh, market it. So I decided to focus on the, um, on the dairy. Uh, as uh, Raju mentioned earlier, uh, this work started when I was then associated with the International Livestock Research Institute. Uh, and um, I remember, again, when the talk started, and I think uh, um, Steve mentioned the um, the different consultations, and I think the last one I attended was the one in the Pretoria area, uh, with um, uh, 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 other colleagues and um, uh, our common friend, the professor from Michigan State, uh, Carl Eicher, and something you know not pleasant happened there. I mean, but we are happy that uh, he's uh, he celebrated one of his uh, you know uh, I mean his birthday recently. Uh, the the nice thing about uh, the the book. Um, is that, um, and I was just re recently reading a management book on, it's called Switch. It's on uh, uh, how to effect change when change is difficult. And uh, in, in the book, there was a, an anecdote about someone who was sent in a rural area somewhere and they asked him, a doctor, to try to uh, eliminate, to try to help uh, eliminate malnutrition. And the, the issue was that everybody knew the problems. I mean, you know, I mean, problem of water sanitation, uh, you know, problem of uh, poor dieting. Everybody knew the problems. So the question was that you know he was he was faced with a difficult case, but how really does he need to go about you know solving a problem? So and he had a limited amount of time. So what he did was to 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 look at that same community, and even though malnutrition was a problem, there were some young people who were healthy. So why were they healthy? Okay, so he decided to focus on these young people who were healthy. And, and he figured out that uh, they were having a different style. You know, they were eating four times a day, their mothers were uh, washing their hands, they were putting some shrimps, uh, you know, in the, in the food, uh, they were putting some leaves in the food, and he figured that these were bright spots, okay, that could be scaled up. So in the context of poor agricultural performance in Africa in general, you do have bright spots. And what this book is trying to do is to actually highlight what those bright spots are and how one can actually, you know, scale that up, replicate, and do better. So that's uh, the, the story of... Um, uh, of dairy in Eastern Africa. This started, it started with actually two or three studies focused on you know, Ethiopia, uh, Kenya, and Uganda. And then uh, the editor saw that, oh, this is, these are contrasting you know, uh, case studies, and we might want to pull them together into one chapter and provide uh, a comparison. Why? Uh, those three countries, are, uh, they sort of share borders in one way or another. Uh, and then uh, they are all in high altitude, high, you know, uh, high potential areas. Um, you know, we look at central Kenya, central Ethiopia, or central uh, Uganda. You know, good, uh, relatively good market access. But the performance of dairy in those three countries, you know, was different. Okay, so something must be being done that is different in each of the countries. So that's what this study tried to. To figure out. So, uh, and by way of methodology, the, 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 the authors look at the historical pattern in Kenya, uh, in Uganda, and, uh, in, and in Ethiopia. And we were able to make an association between the changes, the, you know, the policies that actually took place in each of the countries since 1900, early you know, 1900, up to uh, the time of the study, to try to see what the policy makers were doing that were different. Um, in the case of uh, Kenya, uh, clearly, you know, um, there was early emphasis on commercial agriculture, even though 
it was large scale, for instance, but there were early emphasis on commercial agriculture as opposed to Uganda, which you know, uh, started to focus on commercial agriculture in the 50s, or, as opposed to, let's say, uh, Kenya that started even early in the 1900s, okay? The, 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 the case of Ethiopia was quite different because um, uh, in the 60s, uh, the uh, government had also large scale and then came a, a, a different regime that tried to actually socialize everything, okay, or, or nationalize everything. So you had like a case of uh, price, price depressions, you know, killing the incentive, the number two option that uh, uh, Steve talked about, uh, that did not encourage uh, productivity. And in, 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 in uh, Uganda, you had cases where, um, despite the similar environment with Kenya, um, there was little emphasis on um, uh, diseases, for instance, that was actually killing uh, the cattle, as opposed to Kenya, where there was a lot of support for veterinary services, uh, support for uh, you know, uh, research, and so on. Then, you know, over the years in Kenya, um, around 92, uh, they decided to do a deregulation, okay? They had this uh, uh, KCC, okay? The Kenya uh, Cooperative, you know, uh, uh, Cranberries. And then they, they sort of, uh, you know, disbanded that and then allowed the private sector to, ca to come in. Initially, uh, for the sector, that the subsector to, to, to work, of course, the production of milk d decreased in order to for the price sector to adjust. But then, because they, they move ahead with the, uh, with the policy, then you saw per capita production really increasing significantly. In Ethiopia, um, I was living there, okay, I spent 13 years in Ethiopia. Uh, the drug regime fell in 91. Okay, and then the new government started to actually think more about how to use the private sector to spur uh, growth. And they also allowed, you know, private sector to come in and uh, sort of uh, did not focus on their uh, dairy developer enterprises and so on. And suddenly you saw a bit of, a lot of emphasis on private sector investment in dairy production and then milk production start to, to, to increase in Ethiopia with uh, adoption of uh, um, improved uh, variety, uh, improved uh, breeds, crossbred cows, and so on. So basically, by comparing um, the, uh, the, the three countries, what uh, uh, we came out uh, in, the, in the chapter was that, first of all, there was, a, for all, all three countries, there was emphasis on small order dairy uh, uh, farmers, okay? Because these were the people who were driving uh, the dairy production as opposed to the large scale um, uh, dairy enterprises. And um, the, in Kenya, despite the fact that uh, initially the focus was on the large scale uh, dairy uh, estates, increasingly they allowed the smaller the integration into the marketing chain. That also, uh, they did that in the other countries. One thing that was very important was that the, in Kenya, like the emphasis was more on formal markets like uh, the sanitized milk and so on. But people actually were consuming raw milk by you know, boiling them, that was actually their commodity. And they, the government, they tried to suppress that, okay, initially, and then after that, after they realized that it was not going elsewhere, um, they lifted the ban of suppressing the, the raw milk sales. That also helped a lot, provide incentive for the informal sector to, to, to come in. One commonality among the countries was also the use of livestock and dairy uh, commodities, uh, for, I mean dairy uh, cows, for self-fertility management. That was also a, a commonality between uh, the, three, the, 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 the different countries. The market participation happened to be also um, a key factor. Now, what made the difference between the, the, all the three countries? It was the technology, that point number one that uh, Steve talked about productivity aspects. Kenya had put a lot of emphasis on research, development, high you know, yielding you know, uh, uh, varieties of, uh, of cow, and that really helped to improve productivity significantly. That was not the case for Uganda 
and, uh, and, and Kenya. So Kenya, for instance, was able to really increase the productivity <coughs> of milk per animal about uh, two to three times more than the other um, uh, countries. The other factor was also on the livestock diseases, the livestock, um, the control of the, um, of the diseases. And in Kenya, you had a lot of very good support of veterinary services to help uh, uh, the livestock uh, uh, farmers to uh, fight the diseases, unlike what happened in Uganda when uh, with uh, uh, you know, tuberculosis or other kind of diseases, tick-borne diseases, you know, the cattle were not able to, to survive. The other point that made a difference was also uh, the public sector intervention. And again, that came in in the area of infrastructure. Uh, dairy is a perishable commodity. You produce it, you need to be able to, to sell it. And if you look at where it developed in place like Kenya, it is high market, you know, density, uh, high population density, you know, high market infrastructure areas. So uh, the fact that um, uh, Kenya had invested in uh, rural infrastructure research and extension disease control contributed significantly to making dairy, uh, smaller dairy, develop in that part of the, the, the country. Unlike Ethiopia, for instance, where uh, during that period, infrastructure development, research, uh, uh, and um, uh, uh, disease control was not uh, present. The another, on the incentive side, the elimination of, uh, you know, the subsidies was also uh, a key turning point. In 1992, as I mentioned, the case of Kenya, when they disbanded uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Kenya creameries, I mean, not, I mean, I mean, it was uh, uh, a turning point in Ethiopia. Also, uh, when uh, the new regime came in, they uh, devalued the bur, and then there was successive, you know, devaluation of the of, of the bur. Therefore, importation of milk became, you know, uh, very uh, expensive, and then the uh, farmers start focusing more on dairy production as opposed to other type of farming. That also contributed significantly to. Uh, provide uh, incentive for farmers to focus on, on, on the. Now, so uh, to conclude, um, given this, the, the, the environment, given what we, we studied, and what are the ingredients for the, the what I called earlier the bright spots, okay, for dairy development in uh, Eastern Africa. One, uh, and you find it in the book, is that there was, you know, improved adoption of improved livestock breeds, okay, that was. Uh, one. Still, but that's point number one on productivity enhancement, road path number one. Improve quality of feed for livestock. You can also attribute that to the productivity aspects, okay? The disease control and veterinary services, these are all things that the private sector, I mean, the public sector can, you know, uh, support. Uh, there are cases where, you know, the private sector can come in, but like in some part of the, uh, in one of the countries, there was a gap between what the private sector could provide and then what the public sector could provide. So you need to have a balance. You know, when the private sector cannot come in, when does the government can come in to really provide the opportunities for farmers to take advantage of, uh, of, the, of the services. The um, other ingredient is the farmer involvement in uh, uh, in the in the in the extension, okay, like the traditional extension system of uh, supply driven, where you have uh, uh, people going to to farmers and saying, you know, you need to do A, B, and C, uh, has not been working. Uh, you, you you need to it, it you need to work with uh, 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 communities in order that they can determine what is best for them and then use the demand side of extension services to actually uh, direct uh, the type of technology that's needed. So involvement of communities-based organization was uh, a, a key uh, ingredient. And finally, uh, expansion of markets, okay, is important in, by way of, uh, let's say, you know, uh, uh, providing a rural infrastructure for roads or, uh, you know, providing opportunities for producer organization to, to, to create, uh, uh, to, uh, like, collect, to do some collecting, uh, uh, to provide some uh, 
uh, opportunity for uh, collecting milk, you know, uh, in, in the rural areas and so on. So these are some of the key ingredients in the case of dairy that work uh, for um, uh, uh, Kenya that was a success and did not work for uh, uh, Ethiopia and, uh, and Kenya earlier. But now, with the changes that are, um, uh, that are taking place, you could see growth of milk taking place in uh, Ethiopia as well as in, um, in, uh, in Kenya. Now, before coming here, I got some news. I don't know if it's going to be effective. I mean, I just read some news on Ethiopia, where in, on Kenya, where the parliament you know, uh, has proposed a law uh, to uh, control prices today. So that will be, I mean, I'm, I mean, the government is fighting that. I mean, uh, the, the government is opposing that. But if that kind of law should pass, you can see, you know, 10 years from now, what the reverse impact will be on uh, dairy production and other commodities. So the role of productivity is important. The, the incentive, the signal that people give is quite significant. So this is what I want to share with you for a case study, dairy. I didn't focus on the other, you know, extremely very useful study that we invite you to read. But uh, the, the dairy story in East Africa is a very success, it's a success story that uh, we need to learn from. Thank you.